In this lesson, we are going to really connect to some winter palettes and to some winter scapes that we can do quickly in our sketchbooks. You can do this on a separate piece of paper as well, um, but I kind of gathered some watercolors to start of some colors that really represented winter in my area. This may look very different depending on where you live, if you're somewhere tropical, but there's always a shift in the season, um, even if you are in kind of a warmer climate. Um, I am in Colorado, um, and for us, um, the leaves all fall, um, there, it's a lot of grays and, but the, there's some warmth to the bark and the trees around us. Um, and then we also get a lot of blue with the blue skies. Colorado has a lot of sunshine. Um, so I want to bring some of those blue tones in and then, you know, the shadows that are created, these longer shadows, um, these darker days have these kind of grays and blue tones to them as well. So I'm kind of, you know, bringing in some colors that really, um, to me, portray the area surrounding me. Um, you could follow along with sim a similar palette or just kind of, you know, something that's in your own environment or what you think is representing of winter and start there by just kind of bringing your colors. Now I love to start with watercolors because they're really simple, they're easy to work with, um, all you need is a brush and water, um, and then you could shift then into other mediums, acrylics or um, oils if you want, or pastels, oil pastels, soft pastels, that kind of thing as well. So you can see here, I have a variety of colors. Um, I've got some warm and cool colors that I think are gonna be really nice when I transition into some of these landscapes because um, they'll kind of balance each other out and be very complimentary and gives me a lot of options um, with this color palette. Um, and it really does kind of have that wintry feel. So it's a great way to kind of start um, to connect to a winter palette. This is something you can do on the go, um, or you could work in your studio from some photographs. I'm gonna work now with a pencil. So we have a lot of um, these Ponderosa pines outside of my window of my studio. So I'm working from those, kind of doing these contour sketches of just these trees. So um, keeping it really light, um, moving my pencil around, not picking up very much, but I wanna to start to just kind of really connect to the scenery and to the environment around me. Again, this could be from um, looking out your window, it could be looking at a photograph. If you're somewhere tropical and you really wanna to connect to snow, you could work on some photos from online or create a Pinterest board on these kind of winterscape scenes. Um, but there's just this kind of like rawness and there's a lot of texture and movement in the trees. Um, and I'm almost making them as if they're kind of reflected off of whether it be the ground or, um, you know, we have a pond near us. So kind of putting some of those elements in, but you can see how quickly you can work on these sketches. Um, and it can be anything winter. It could be a pine cone, um, your trees. It can be, you know, if it's the holidays, you could focus on things in the interior to connect to that winter scene. And from here, I just cut out some Arches uh, watercolor paper to move right into these washes, these really quick kind of winterscape washes using this palette. And I love working on these because if you mess up, you can, you know, you can remove them, you could tape them down, um, you could, you know, that's really nice as opposed to working right on the journal page. Um, and you can work on a bunch of these little, um, just little washes inspired by the winterscapes. So winter to me is something I've really had to learn to embrace. Um, I grew up as a tennis player. I'd always go to warm places. So even though I lived in um, an environment where there were seasons and longer winters, I was often gone to these warmer areas. Um, so I've had to really shift 
um, not only my own perspective on it, but also really kind of embrace these slower times and fill them with things that I love in a different way. There's a lot of books and podcasts that kind of embrace this kind of mentality. Um, a couple that I've read, um, Wintering, The Power of Rest and Retreat in Difficult Times by Catherine May, um, The Little Book of Huga, um, which is a Danish concept of really kind of encompassing our feelings of comfort and contentment um, and finding and accessing these joys of life. and. For me, I really had to reach deep um, in these winter months, and now I absolutely love winter. I make space for my art. It's my creative time. It's when I kind of retreat a little bit as far as get into my creative process. Um, but I also get out a lot with my family. I've, I've now like really embraced skiing and, and bundling up and hiking no matter the weather. Um, so for me, it really was just a shift of perspective and also knowing that I had to embrace things that I couldn't do in the other seasons. And there was something so beautiful about that that I can look forward to. And I think even if we live in an environment where it is warm all year, if we can make those shifts and, and kind of create these seasons for ourselves, then we really can look forward to these different times throughout the year. So um, that's kind of the premise of, you know, these lessons um, and, and what I really wanted to connect to these wintering scenes. It's maybe something I had avoided even in my art before because it wasn't something I loved. Um, but now I really feel this embracing of this wintering of these winter scapes. So as I'm painting here, you can see I've kind of done a mix of some painting. I'm mixing my cool and my warm colors. I'm doing a scene of kind of the snow in the front and these pine trees. And I kind of created um, the trees using my Stabilo over this, um, you know, water and then doing these light washes and then coming back in with a little bit more saturation. So this kind of grayish blue sky um, I really wanted to put in here um, and then kind of create that warmth of the trees and maybe the sun coming up on the horizon um, with this kind of grayness at the bottom um, representational of, of the snow. Um, but these are really, really quick washes, but they're great studies for bigger pieces. When I do these studies, I want materials that are really quick, really easy to use. I don't want to overthink it because, you know, maybe I want to shift my palette by this point. Um, you know, I don't want to really jump into all my mediums yet. I just want to kind of study not only the landscapes or things that kind of inspire me about winter, but I also want to just keep my supplies really simple. So I'm coming in with a Stabilo, which goes right over the water um, and coming in with just a little bit more detail of the trees. I feel like they kind of got a little smudged. Um, that's a beauty of watercolor. You don't really know the direction it's going, but I want to come in with that and maybe my white charcoal just for some details. And I cut out another little watercolor piece, a little bit more um, longer in that kind of landscape mode. And I'm gonna jump into another landscape as well. So creating these washes, I talked a little bit more about wintering, but this time I'll talk a little bit more about the process. But I like to go in and add the water. You can either add water first and then add your watercolors and let them kind of bleed, which gives you a little less control, or you can add the watercolor directly to the brush and then come over it. So I like to do kind of a combination. I love with watercolors that they do bleed and it's unexpected and you kind of shift whatever landscape you either are looking at or have in mind and just kind of make it into something else. Um, I think we, sometimes we get so caught up on what we're looking at or the photograph and making it look that way that sometimes it needs to take its own course and almost have a little bit more abstract feel. Um, and I love bringing that like expressionism and the abstractness into my landscapes. It gives it to me, it's just more playful, more fun, um, and not so restrictive. 
depending on how much pigment you put onto your brush, it's gonna change, you know, the, the look and feel of your little washes. So, you know, you can have a really light and airy feel with very little pigment, or, you know, here I'm adding a little bit more black and contrast, and, you know, it's showing just a little bit more depth to it as well. Um, and then again, coming into that Stabilo, I love the Stabilo because you can go over it right over the water and there's just this complete unpredictability to it, which I think is just so beautiful. So I, I encourage you to, to do a few of these washes and just kind of play around with different scenes. Maybe you're by the beach or the ocean or the sea, um, or, you know, inspired by these snow scenes or these tree scenes like I have here um, right outside of my window. So for our final scene, I'm gonna work on a piece of paper that's just a little bit larger. I have my handmade piece of paper in the background to see, show you that you could um, work directly on that or you could mount this other piece of watercolor onto this um, to create this beautiful kind of framed finish. Um, with this piece, I'm gonna kind of have this mountain drop backdrop, um, which is, you know, in the Colorado area. And this scene is really going to have kind of those, combine those pine trees and those little scapes that we've been working on, almost like a scene of the trees right by a lakeside or water to, to bring in some of that reflection. Now, I'm really working on keeping some open space here. Um, so I'll probably bring in my Stabilo and my pencils um, to, to kind of bring in some dark areas and some line work to this um, and add a little bit more fluidity and then like definition with the pencil and then fluidity around with the watercolors. But my goal is to leave some open space and to allow it to kind of breathe and have that unfinished look to it. Um, so I just wanted to work a little bit larger because um, these could be turned into kind of finalized pieces um, or then you could proceed and go into some acrylics or oils as well. Um, but, you know, really thinking a little bit more about what the winter means to you. Um, I think that in a time and place where we're, we're supposed to always be busy and doing, um, it's not that I'm not doing things in the winter. It's just that I have a shift in what I do do. Um, so maybe I slow down some of my social events and my outings, but I'm, you know, turning in a little bit more into my creative side, um, my reflective kind of period. Um, in the book, Wintering, she, she talks about how it's deeply unfashionable to slow down, letting your spare time expand, getting enough sleep, resting. Um, these are all things that, you know, animals embrace. And, you know, we see the shifts if there's shifts of seasons in our environment. We see the trees do it, the plants, there's, there's this period of rest. And, being someone that's not great at completely resting, for me, it's a shift of, you know, uh, instead of being outside as much, I, you know, maybe I'm going inside a little bit more and creating. So, so really think of what wintering means to you, how that shift in season can be a shift in your own life to bring inspiration and kind of be a refresh to you as opposed to a time where you're like, oh, I'm like sidelined from the things that I really want to be doing. Um, you just kind of shift that. So you can see here, I'm kind of building those trees, but then creating these washes in the water below. Um, when you create a reflection, you, you know, sometimes the water is so still that the trees look exactly reflected the same what they do above. But if there's any movement to the water, you're gonna have a little bit of blur in your reflection. So keep that in mind and, and make the reflection just a slightly blur, more blurry than the actual um, trees themselves. And I want to bring in, again, that warmth here. I want it to be really heavy on the left. I want it kind of draped down so you can feel this mountain scene behind it without 
creating a lot of definition. My goal here is to create these pieces in a short amount of time because this allows more expression, more abstract feel, and it really allows just a little bit more creative flow um, as you're thinking of your own winter scapes. There's been a lot of different ways that I've embraced um, winter a little bit more. Um, again, the creative process comes easily. I love to kind of retreat and, and get creative. Um, but for me, it, it did get, um, you know, I love having that alone time and, and it's a way for me to create and think. But I also needed to make an added effort to connect with people. That is so important to me to connect with friends and so I had to almost um, just go out of my way. I think in the summer months, it's so much easier to connect with others. So, you know, putting on warmer clothes, still going for that hike and just bundling up. Um, putting candles around my space and adding warmth has really, really boosted my mood during these winter months. Going out and taking photos of these beautiful winterscapes, these frosted trees after a snowstorm, going out and sledding or skiing. Um, you know, there's so many opportunities to connect back to nature even when it's cold out. So here I'm starting to bring in that Stabilo. Um, and, you know, again, moving it around with my, my uh, brush and then also making a little more definition with the pencil. So I encourage you as you create these kind of winter scenes to really reflect and think about the ways that you might shift in a season and you know what you can embrace a little bit more or what you need more of in these slower months um, to, to bring that joy into your life and to bring that inspiration into your own art practice. And I will make sure I link these books. I think they were really inspiring to me to think of some new ideas and ways to embrace the winter. And I wanted this scene to be really muted, um, but I am gonna come in with just a little bit of these blue hues to really highlight kind of that um, mountain scene and to bring in that wintry feel um, to the bottom so that you really have that sense of water below. Thank you so much for joining me on this quick lesson. I hope you enjoyed these winterscapes and you embrace your own change of season.